Alright, so we are... Is it recording? Oh yeah, it's recording. Oh, <laughs> so we are the Peace Crafter Group. Um, we'll be letting you know more what our project is about today. My name is Reed. This is Tessa, Jeremy, Isaac, and Matt. Okay, so the project that we are working closely with falls under the foundation called My Choices Foundation. And that is split up into two operations, which is Operation Peacemaker and Operation Red Alert. But our specific project is a spin-off from the Peacemaker operation, and our project is called Project Peace Crafter. So just to give some background on what Peacemaker operation is, um, before we dive into what Peace Crafter is, Peacemaker was formed in 2012, and the vision is to empower women in India, and the foundation um, in general, aims to give women, children, and families choices to live lives free from violence, abuse, and exploitation. And so the Peacemaker works to give 100% free counseling, rights education, legal aid to victims of domestic violence. And then all operations in the foundation work under the greater vision of ending large-scale human trafficking and sex slavery by 2020. So what our project is mainly focusing on is the peace crafter aspect, and that is, falls under the umbrella of the peacemaker. So uh, the peace crafter um, employs local women and provides a steady income for them, and also trains them to eat in sewing and that sort of sorts of uh, stuff. And it also provides a safe environment for them to work in. And so. Their apparel is 100% upcycled silk, so pretty similar to the other group. And their, some of their products are saris, bags, scarves, throws, pillowcases, clutches, and also ornaments and some other stuff. And each woman develops their own technique, so they really emphasize using uniqueness in their products and differentiate themselves from that. And uh, so the impact of uh, their products uh, is for economic empowerment, uh, supporting women, protecting against uh, human trafficking, um, and of course uh, they will support their uh, workers and uh, other women that are being out of um, human trafficking. They also are very uh, sustainable in processing uh, everything from their work to their company and uh, they uh, heavily emphasize ethical practices uh, for uh, just like many businesses. Okay, so some of the opportunities that we're having here um, throughout this project are we're gonna try and help build the Peace Crafter brand within the US, so this is a US focused brand, or well it's Indian focused, but we're trying to bring it into the US, into the market here. So what we're gonna look for is developing a platform to integrate their online sales into. And one of um, the opportunities that they suggested is finding a way to sell these products directly to a wholesaler so that we could distribute them to the wholesaler and then the wholesaler could market them and maybe do some of that larger sales se selling. Um, we also want to support their employees economically, so finding a good price point for those products and being able to support the women so that they can maintain um, that lifestyle, being able to just live and afford to live. Um, next, we look at some of the challenges that will occur um, throughout this project. Um, one of the biggest is just building that online presence and expanding it so that it gets enough traction. Um, we want to help generate revenue for them um, consistently and be able to create sort of a mass awareness for these issues. Um, just trying to show that there's um, millions of women in India that are suffering through some of these consequences and just trying to help them with that. Um, also, we want to train these peace crafters to be highly skilled. This is a product that is made by hand, so we want to make sure that they are um, built out of care and to be sustainable um, in use. And then more of a broader challenge here of what the company is trying to do is they're trying to stop gender-based violence in India, um, specifically against those women, and give them a life free from abuse. Any questions? Is there any questions? <coughs> so you talked 
talked about distributing through a wholesaler. Do you guys have any um, wholesalers in mind that you're going to communicate with? It's going to come with our research. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, just a thought for y'all. I know there's a store in Holland, Tesla, I think it's here. The bridge. The bridge. Yeah. They yeah. do this. So okay. that might actually be a huge outlet for you just to see how they operate. Yeah. Because sure. I know they work with companies like, um, yes, that bring wares from different countries into the United States and sell them. Okay. So yeah. maybe talking to them. I know the owners go to my church. They're great. They're super, super nice people. Retail outlets, they say, do not just go for online selling. They want to compare different channels, you know, apart from retailers. Do you have any idea how to contact different retail retailers? I guess like one thing, so you said build and expand their online presence, so they currently don't have any online presence, or what's the situation with that? They do have an online presence on their website, but I think they want to just uh, make it more accessible in terms of their website, because you do have to do a little bit of digging in order for you to like get, get on their actual website and then go to their shopping um, area on that website. So they want you to actually like help remodel that, or are they just asking you to like? So I think just trying to find it in general, like you know, make it more accessible. So like you know, if you're trying to search up Facebook, for instance, it will be like right there. So it, they're probably trying to look under that same category. It would be just refocusing it under more fitting the U.S. market. Yeah, yeah. Just gonna say remodeling. Thank you. Thank you.